Well, we're ready for class H, which deals with camera lenses. In this particular class, I like to dedicate to engineers because the approach I'm gonna take had been suggested by a professor at Eastern Carolina University, Dr. Helen Park, who was an expert in education. And she said some classes should be all about solving problems, like real life problems. And we have spent a lot of time doing derivations and understanding basic physics of lenses. And this is perfect. We can have a class now that's completely engineering, that we're gonna do optical engineering. We're gonna solve problems with the camera. And the problems that we're gonna solve, the first one is how to take pictures of things that are really close up, like flowers, insects, all right? That is a problem. How to, how to do that? And another problem is how do I take pictures of things far away, the telephoto lens? And then how do I take pictures with the wide angle lens? How do I design a wide angle lens? And then how do I get a zoom lens where I can uh, zoom in or zoom out? So there are the four basic areas of today, close up photography, the uh, photography of, of far away, telephoto photography, and wide angle photography, where you want the wide angle of view, and then zoom uh, optics, uh, how to do the zoom. So this is really a, a nice uh, change of pace. Uh, we will not be in Algebra City. We have derived the formulas, and now we're gonna have fun plugging in numbers and being creative. Uh, we're plugging the numbers uh, early in the calculation and to see how things come out. So I hope you enjoy it. I uh, really have fun with applications in physics. I think it, it shows uh, the power of physics. And, and you know, when I first started teaching many years ago, I helped set up the 2 plus 2 program with engineering. And when we had a guest, the director, the chair of mechanical and aerospace engineering, uh, Dr. Desjardins from NC State come to us, he actually said to take physics majors in the master's program. He says like, you know, if you're a physics major, like you can get an engineering, like master's degree, like like it's it's cool. Like, you know, two plus two program is one way, but you know, physics major is fine. Uh, in fact, he actually thought that might be better because you have your educations more integrated in one school. Uh, so uh, a lot of a lot of physics uh, folks, uh, you know, go engineering, get jobs at engineering firms, or go into engineering. I had a, a best friend whose brother went into meteorology. Is like like he had a degree in physics and then became a meteorologist, and then lots of uh, people with physics degrees become astronomers or go into astronomy. So you, with the physics background, you could go into like areas of engineering, electrical, mechanical. And here, optical engineering is what we're talking about today, how to design camera lenses that are then sold and marketed. So I hope you uh, have fun uh, here with the power of physics in its application form today, completely application, engineering applications, and a change of pace from the derivations. Chapter H, camera lenses. And the first section, let's just talk about lens in general, design. This class is more of an engineering class. And here, in our text, you find the cover of the physics teacher. This is a paper that I wrote. The editor requested it. I'd gone to New York and presented slides at the Biltmore House at different focal lengths, and you can't lose with the Biltmore House. I mean, it just really sells physics and application. Here is my single lens reflex camera, that traditional camera of the 20th century for pros and semi-pros has a mirror so that you can see 
what you're going to get. See, this light is directed to a viewfinder where you look here and when you're ready to take the picture, this mirror will flip up and expose the film. Now there's a shutter. This shutter is back here actually. So when this flips up, the shutter curtain will zip across and it'll have a certain uh, width to it. And depending on that, on that width, that opening that width, that width, it'll expose the film uh, more or less. Notice that there's not just one lens that in a camera where you can spend easily a hundred hours just for the lens. And this lens pops off on the link, single lens reflex camera. You can pop this off and put on another lens. Notice that the mirror takes up space. And here, this lens has one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of glass so that aberrations can be minimized. Now, aberrations occur uh, when you have you know, nice spherical cuts. There's going to be aberrations. And also the fact that uh, light, uh, different wavelengths spreads out, you know, the prism action, like a rainbow, uh, that's an aberration. So this doublet here, this diverging lens and this converging lens combination helps to keep the colors together. And these other uh, lens elements are put in place to correct for all kinds of aberrations, which we'll have to look at later in the course, you know, what aberrations are, you know, different types of aberrations. And they put a stop in the middle, and that helps to improve on the aberrations also. So that's the uh, basic idea of the single lens reflex uh, camera. Uh, this actually has a roof. This actually reflects in the other dimension. This is a little complicated, this uh, little pentaprism up here that does that. So that's your SLR for short. And we're gonna look at different uh, lenses uh, for the camera. All right. And I hope you get a chance to look at the paper here, the PDF file, that you can read about this paper a long, long time ago yeah, that it was published. All right, we'll look at some of the concepts today. And the first uh, section will be dealing with close-up photography. This class is inspired from a version I teach for the general students. I teach a, a course, Light and Visual Phenomena, which doesn't require much math. And a colleague at Eastern Carolina, Dr. Helen Park, says it's nice to have a class occasionally where you present problems and solve them. So this class is gonna be like that. We're gonna be doing problems and solving them, engineering problems and solving them. And one problem is how do you take pictures of flowers? How can you get close to a flower and take a picture? And these are pictures I took with the iPhone camera. Now the iPhone camera is so automatic and all. And we're gonna be looking at the single lens reflex camera historically because you, you then are forced to design certain things that are not, not gonna be automatic for everything and helps us understand the physics a little better. Uh, but the marvelous invention of the iPhone where you just point and shoot, that is really great. But let's look at this problem from the point of view of physics. How can you take a picture of things that are close up? Well, uh, the problem that we run into in taking uh, close up can be looked at this, this situation where you have a barrel you can turn and move this a little bit away from the film, but not much something like 10 millimeters. So focal length's about here for this standard SLR is 50 millimeters. So the focal length like here is 50. And always remember you need some room for that, for that mirror. And then here you can turn the barrel and move it uh, just 10 millimeters. So, so that means uh, if you look at your lens and you look at your film, that if you're taking a picture of things that are very, very far away, this is gonna be your focal length, your 50 millimeters, because light from far away, you know, light from very, very far away, like say the moon, for example, you know, is gonna focus uh, on the focal plane. And if you can extend this just slightly here to 60 millimeters, let's see what that can get you. 
Well, if you have one over S object distance plus one over SI is one over F. So what we're saying here is that we're gonna have a fixed focal length. This focal length is gonna be 50 millimeters. We have that fixed. And we're gonna be able to get as far away from the film as possible is gonna be 60. That's gonna be the SI. And this will tell us how close we can get to the film. This is gonna be your 60, and this is then one over 50. All right, so one over SO for object is one over 50 minus one over 60. So we find the common denominator, which will be 50 times 60. And we'll put the 60 here, so the 60s cancel, you have one over 50, and minus 50 there, so the 50s cancel, you're subtracting one over 60. This is gonna be equal to minus 10 over 3,000. So that means the object distance, uh, plus 10, sorry, plus 10, 60 minus 50 is plus 10. And you know, when you, when you make a sign mistake like that, the reason why I immediately went back to fix it was because I know that the object distance is to the left, is positive. So when I had that minus sign there, I, I knew immediately, like I made a mistake. And that's good practice to, to get into, just kind of using your physics intuition of parameters and things uh, to help you correct things. So correcting that, and then if we flip it, we get 3,000 over uh, 10. And that means we can get as close as 300 millimeters. Now 300 millimeters, that would be 30 centimeters. And 30 centimeters is close to a foot. Now, I think the camera I had, it said a half a meter, like roughly a foot and a half. Uh, it couldn't get this close. And that's because this, it couldn't quite go to 60. It, it was like a little less than 60, but we're gonna use 60 as sort of the model, uh, round off number. So the problem is here, uh, and before we do the problem, let's just go ahead and calculate the magnification. It's just nice to do that also. Minus SI over SO and that SI is, is your 60, and then your SO here was gonna be 300. So if we look at that, this is minus one over five. So uh, magnification's a fifth, and it's inverted. So magnification here is negative 0.2, all right? Uh, typically with a camera, someone's far away, you know, someone that's like five feet, it's gonna be like inches on, on the film, like when you take a picture. So we're used to, you know, this effect where the magnification is gonna be smaller, the real image is small. So the problem, if you wanna to try to get closer, and I encourage you to look at the book where these pictures will come out even better in the book, uh, the PDF file, this is a printout, and then you're looking at a video of a printout. Uh, to get close, we see we have a problem that you, you get too close, then the image is too far away. And like if this is your 60 here, you used up everything, separation, then you, you can't get that far away. So uh, let's just go ahead and illustrate that here in the notes, that if you get too close, then this image is too far away, and, and this here, you can't, you can't manage this distance. You can only manage 60, and see, that's our maximum. I suppose you wanna get closer with that flower to get a better picture, uh, closer, you know, I mean, a larger picture. Then what we need to do is solve this problem, and there's two ways, well, Actually, there's several ways to solve it, more than two. Uh, one way is to buy an expensive macro lens that does it. But the cheaper way to do it is to attach close-up lenses uh, on the front. And to make 
to make this more, more powerful of a, of a lens system. But before we do that, since those, since those are given in terms of diopters, I would like to introduce the concept of diopters, the strength of the lens. Right? It's just when you buy these close-up lenses and like thread them on, they're like in diopters. So let's go back to look at the formula we derived where we had two lenses and we had them separated by a distance D and had focal lengths, and each had their focal lengths. So this had maybe F1, F1 say, and sort of some general case, F2, you know, F2, uh, some uh, focal lengths there. You know, this is F1, F1, this is F2 and F2, and you could put a prime on the second one if you like. But the main thing here is we derived a nice formula that F is F1 times F2 over F1 plus F2 minus D. And the other form of that form, uh, formula is one over F was equal to one over F1 plus one over F2 minus D over F1, F2. So these are the two forms that we, we derived uh, earlier in our course. Well, since we're going to thread those on, the D is going to be zero. It's going to be real close. There's not like no separation. So that means this is going to go. And this is a very nice formula. Actually, kind of better than this one. I'll tell you why. Uh, by the way, remember the product over the sum? I told, told you about if you had two things, reciprocals, you could write product over the sum. Uh, only two two reciprocals like that. You can't do it if there's three. But the reason why this is nice is because this is the power of the lens. If the focal length is small, it's a stronger lens. So opticians love this and eye doctors love this, that the powers add. See, the reciprocal the focal lengths add. That's the rule. So uh, here, think of the lens as the ability to hug you. In other words, this is like hugging, you bring the rays in, like you're hugging someone, bringing it close to your chest, say. And if you can bring the rays in closer or more, that's a stronger lens. If you have like pane glass window, you don't bring the rays in at all. I, like if you were had slight curvature there, you would meet like zillions of miles away. Well, that's a weak lens. Uh, if you have pane glass window, it's like nothing. That's like, so here the focal length, when the focal length goes to infinity, the reciprocal here is going to go to zero. You say I, the power of the lens is zero. It's like, it's like you're doing nothing to help me if I need glasses to read and you've just put the regular pane glass window in front, I'm not going to be able to say anything. So here's a nice definition and this is your diopters. Your power in diopters is given by one over the focal length when the focal length is in meters. But notice that if you had centimeters, you could divide it into 100. So this would be the same if it was in centimeters. Same. And if you had millimeters, you would divide it into 1,000. So if we were to take an example, for example, suppose that the F is equal to 1 half of a meter. If, if the focal length is 0.5 meter, then one divided by 0.5, that would give you two diopters. And the D stands for diopters. Two diopters. But see, you know, half of meter is also 50 centimeters. So if you want to work in centimeters and you take the 100 and divide by 50, you also get two. Say. But 50 centimeters is 500 millimeters. But if you use the millimeter formula, I'm giving you confidence that these are correct formulas and divide by 500, then the answer is also two. So I like to remember all three formulas, one over F in meters, 100 over F in centimeters, and 1,000 over F in millimeters. 
because a lot of times we're using lenses with millimeters, all right? So that's a nice formula, uh, the, the diopter formula. And the amazing thing is that diopters add. See, that, that's amazing. You got a measurement of the lens that it adds. If you put them two together, like, you know, with no distance between them, like they add. So that's very, very, very convenient. And now we're gonna look at a problem, uh, a solution, uh, two solutions. Uh, we're gonna give you one solution with the close-up lenses. Now, when you buy these things, like, like, like here you go, you get three of them, plus one diopter, plus two diopter, and plus four. I remember when I bought my camera, the salesperson was very, very slick. And like for like 30 bucks says, you, you wanna get these? You can take pictures of things close up. And like, I was sold, like I bought them on the spot and never regretted buying these. And they have threads, and you got to be careful that if you have a camera with a certain, you know, size lens diameter, you have to buy the one that fits your camera. Otherwise, they won't they won't go on right. So, uh, the manufacturer makes these for different cameras. So, in the close up lens the lenses here, you have a plus one D, a plus two D, and a plus four D. So, what we're going to do is take our take our camera lens which is the focal length here uh, is going to be 50, all right? So we have 50, we have 50 uh, millimeter lens is what we have there. And what is a 50 millimeter lens? Well, the diopters for that, if you take the thousand, you know, use the thousand for the millimeters, that's gonna be uh, 20 diopters. So I, I have 20 diopters. So I stick on the one, I'm gonna get 21 diopters. So like, let's do that. So if we stick on the one diopter, then what is happening is that the lens combination is now more powerful. It has more diopters. I wanted to show you here this picture in the book where if you didn't put the other lens on the front, then you can bend the rays more. In other words, you bring the focal, you've changed the focal length, you made the lens more powerful. So while here, the light couldn't focus on the film, now with this extra power, you can bring it to the film. So that's like one way to solve the problem, and that's the close-up lens attachments, you know, solution, uh, solution A. So this would mean that we would have here, if we consider this, yeah, we go ahead and call that one. So power one is 20D, and then power two, which is the one we're gonna put on the front, this one here, say that's 1D, then the power of the combination is 21D, all right? Now with 21D, uh, if you wanted to know what the focal length was, if you were curious, remember the focal length in millimeters would be to take a thousand and divide by 21. So if you do that, you get, you know, now it's 47.62 millimeters. It's no longer 50. You got a stronger lens, like this bending the rays more. Remember, short focal length means you're hugging the rays more and bringing them closer to you. So then we're going to see how close we can get. So 1 over F is 1 over SO plus one over SI. Now one over F, here's F. I like fractions. So one over F would be 21 over a thousand. All right, because this is what F is. And uh, we're thinking here uh, millimeters. That's what we're thinking in. So this is, this is good. And then this is one over S O. And then the closest that we can get is still going to be uh, you're, you're 60. In other words, if you look at this picture, we're still, we're still 60. I mean, we're at, we're at max separation. It's just that now this extra lens on there is going to make it possible 
to make that 60 work. All right. So if you go to the next step, 21 over 1,000 minus 1 over 60 is the new object distance. Then if you uh, work this out, you know, use the calculator, you get the object distance is 231 millimeters. Hey, that's pretty good because remember earlier we got 300. Hey, we're getting closer now. Like that, that's pretty good. That's like 23 centimeters. This is 30 centimeters from the camera, from that, from that camera. Uh, here you got uh, 23 centimeters. So the flower is going to be larger. In fact, let's find out what the magnification is now, minus SI over SO. Uh, SI is going to be 60. That's, that's going to be the case for here. And then 231. Uh, this is going to be, this is bigger. See, before it was 0.2. It was a, this is bigger. This is like, this is now closer to a quarter. So instead of a fifth, the size is quarter size, it's bigger. Now suppose we got crazy, want to slap them all on. I mean, you can do that. Let's do that. So we're going to slap them all on. Then one plus two plus four, that's going to be three plus four is seven, plus the 20. You're going to have the power now is 27 diopters. Now with the 27 diopters, then this equation here becomes 27 over 1,000 is 1 over SO plus 1 over 60. Let's see what, like, let's see what we get here. So that means that if you look at 1 over SO, that's going to be 27 over 1,000 minus 1 over 60, and then we get the calculator out. We're going to work out what this is, and you find the SO is now 97 millimeters. Uh, now we're, we're, we're way down. Look at that. It, we went from 300 to 200 to now 100. That's very, very close. Uh, this is uh, uh, This is about at nine point, well, it's at 9.7 centimeters, and that would be about 10 centimeters. That's, you know, that's very close. Like, like 10 centimeters is, is, is pretty, pretty small. Like, so that's getting very close. And if we look at the magnification now, the minus SI over SO, you got your 60 as usual, but now you have a 97, and this is close to two thirds. See, this is, uh, minus 0.62, more like two thirds. So we went from a magnification of one fifth to a magnification of like a one quarter, and now to like uh, two thirds. Notice that in the camera, uh, your your image is going to be upside down, and even if you went into the page here, you would come out of the page here like that. So this is like north, and if that's east then this is south and this is west. But can you imagine just turning the film around, like just turn the picture around the other way, then this will point up and this will point, in other words, if you turn it around, then this will point north and this will point east. So, so the fact that the picture is upside down inverted, like we don't care because you can turn a picture around the other way. So it's, it's fine. So let's see what the result is when I ripped off my wife's license. Let's see, uh, when she didn't know it. Um, then uh, this is the normal lens, took this picture. It's a little dark because the camera got f f faked out. I thought it, it saw this white piece of paper and, and this looks darker. It gets better though if we go to the uh, uh, smaller view, which you get when you add more diopters. So this is the one lens attached, gave you magnification, more magnification. And then here is to attaching one and two. And here you uh, go one, two, and four. It's kind of neat that you can have all these possibilities. You could put the one on there. You could put the two on there by itself. 
the four on there by itself, or the one and the two, the one and the four, the two and the four, and then all three together. They just screw on after each other. And look at that. That's a, this is a license, uh, like your ID, your UNCA ID, one card. You know, that's like that's about the size, and and this is but it's pretty good. It's like it's like like a picture is like it's filling out the picture, like the whole thing. So that's that's neat. That's one solution. Now we go to the next solution, and the next solution is. Uh, well, if you uh, want to actually get the film back there, you can use extension tubes. So that's another way, another invention. So we're gonna we're gonna put some tubes in between. You pop off the lens; those lenses in SR, you just pop right off, and then you put the tubes in there, and then you make the camera bigger. So that's that's the second solution in our engineering class today of how to solve problems in the camera. And this problem is solved by the extension tube. The extension tube. And these are cheaper. I mean, you have that macro solution. I, I mentioned that macro solution. That's a solution you just buy, buy an expensive lens that's gonna be you know bigger or longer and it's gonna take care of you. It has correct for aberrations and all that. Uh, this, These are cheaper ways, but you know, sometimes uh, cheaper ways and the way to go. All right, so here in this extension tubes, uh, you have, let's see, the ones I bought, I had a 12 millimeter, because there, you know, there's like three of them. I had a 12 millimeter, and then uh, had uh, had a 20 and, and a 36. So let, let's write those down, a 12, I had a 20 and a 36, like the three extension tubes, and you can use them in combinations. And these are neat because the camera I bought, I like the, the camera lens I bought had a bayonet mount. We just like push in and pop off. So you don't have to screw these in. This is very fast, just like, this pops it right off. You just line up the red dot with the red dot and like turn it, it clicks in place. So uh, that, that was very convenient to switch lenses and things fast. So now, the the image distance that I can get you here is I got her I got my 60 I got my 60 and now I can add to the 60 uh, these three so if we add these three we're basically adding here this is 12 and 36 is 48 and 20 is going to be 68 so if we uh, put that on there with the 60 we already have, we have 128 millimeters. So now we go to our formula, one over F is one over SO plus one over SI, and here we're keeping the lens the same. So that means we have one over 50, the lens isn't changing, 50 millimeters focal length. We wanna find out how close we can get now, and this is gonna be 128. All right, so that means one over SO is one over 50 minus one over 28. And when you use the calculator on this thing, you get the SO is 82 millimeters. That's, that's uh, 8.2 centimeters that's like even better than what we had, you know, with the other, with the other case with the uh, close-up lenses. So the magnification minus SI over SO. So now what we're going to do is uh, check out the magnification. Now notice when you have the extension tubes, uh, we're no longer uh, at sixty. We're we're farther back. So the SI, uh, unlike with the uh, close-up lenses, the SI now has the increased value due to the tubes. So we now take the ratio SI, the 128, over 82, the value we solve for how close we can get. And look at this. It's bigger than life size. Wow. The extension tubes really do uh, beat the close-up lenses impressively. Look at that. And if we go to... An example here, 
uh, with the license, look at this. Uh, here's like the picture is showing part of the license because you see that uh, one and a half, uh, one and a half magnification. Now the license, only part of the license fits in the field of view because it's magnified so much. Uh, it's like we're really seeing part of it. And then if you to slap on even the close-up lenses too, you would even get even closer and closer, closer. And I did one here with my old ID. You probably don't believe that's me, but it is. And uh, this is, well, half a century ago, uh, the University of Maryland, a uh, graduate student, my ID when I first started at the University of Maryland so long ago. Uh, so a lot of fun with these uh, extension tubes and these uh, close-up uh, lenses. So we're solving problems today, engineering. So I, I like the, this cl particular uh, class as a change of pace. We're not doing Algebra City. We're not deriving like formulas, uh, general formulas. We're simply... Uh, well, I wouldn't say simply because engineering is very hard. Uh, we're, uh, we're taking a different uh, a, a task. Uh, we're trying to solve problems. Uh, and, and that's very creative. And that's very practical. And that's uh, something that's uh, marketable in a skill to be able to apply physics in a way that you can make products and, and sell them. So now we come to the problem of the telephoto lens. You never want to get too close to a bear. And here are students at Whitesides Hall paying attention in class like good UNCA students. This is before coronavirus, so everyone's sitting close to each other. And there's a bear outside. So I used here a telephoto shot so I wouldn't have to get that close to a bear. I'm not as close as it appears to the bear. I'm far away uh, taking a picture of this bear. So. Uh, the problem that we have with the telephoto, and let's go ahead and uh, make uh, H2. The topic is the telephoto. Think of telephoto like telescope. If you have a telescope, you see things far away like going to be big. You're going to make them big, uh, like craters on the moon. So when you have a telephoto lens, it's like you're looking at something far away. It's going to be like big, you know, relatively speaking. It's going to you know, be larger. So what we're gonna do here is uh, show you what the problem is. Uh, when you're far away, the object is far away, then your formula one over F equals one over SO plus one over SI. You find that this can, that this goes away because one over infinity is gonna kind of go to zero. And then you're basically at a focal length. So. So here, if you look up here, when you're far away, it's like here's like rays coming from far away. The sun and rays meet and gonna be at this point. Uh, by the way, never point your camera at the sun and never look at the sun because the light is so bright, it can damage your camera. It can mess up your, uh, your metering system. It can mess up your photo, your, your cells back here, your, your sensitive. So never, never you know, point at the sun and never look at the sun because the light will focus like this on your retina and very, very bright, and you don't want to uh, get injured. So never look at the sun. So here, the magnification is going to be minus SI over SO, which is going to go to, I'm going to say minus SI. I'm just going to write down the word large. All right, that would be the magnification. And I like to have a reference magnification at the 50 millimeter case, then what that's gonna be is minus 50 over large. Because see, your SI is your focal length when you're far away. And I wanna get a ratio. I wanna look at the magnification of my telephoto and I'm gonna call it relative. It's relative to the 50. So this is gonna be M and we could just say that's tele, if you want, you know, the telephoto. And we're going to divide by the case for the 50. So, so the telephoto case is going to be minus F over large. 
and the 50 is going to be minus 50 over large. Larges are going to cancel, and you get this cool formula that the relative magnification is going to be F, the focal length, divided by 50. So whatever I can do with a 50 millimeter lens, if I have like a 100 millimeter lens, then it's like twice, twice as magnified on the film. And if I have like a 200, it'd be four times bigger. If I have a thousand, wow, uh, you know, that's gonna be like 20 times uh, bigger. And if I have 2,000, and you could have a 2,000 uh, millimeter, then that's a 40 times. It's like, like we're talking telescope here. But here's the problem. F has to be lo a long, long focal length. Like, like 2,000. This is not good. The camera's gonna stick out too far. I mean, what is this? Uh, camera stick out 2,000 millimeters, that's two meters? Uh, I mean, this is, this is a joke. I mean, this is gonna be two meters? That's like six feet. You can't have a camera stick out that long. So what we're gonna do here is use the laws of optics, engineering optics, and engineers have figured this out, and we're gonna look at this beautiful solution. They have a diverging lens with the converging lens. They have a two lens system, and there'll be several pieces of glass for each of these component parts because of aberrations, but we can think of it as the converging, the component part of the compound lens system and then the diverging part. Now, this is, look how this works. One lens would just do this, bend one time. But watch this, this is coming in like this. This is gonna to bend toward a focal point that would bend here someplace, all right? But then when it gets to the diverging lens, diverging lens kicks it up to go on the film. But now the film has been faked out. The film thinks this light bent once right there. So the film thinks that the focal length is the top one. It's like, this is really impressive, right? But the camera is, is not that long. I mean, the camera's small, it's compact. So that's what you want. You wanna put that diverging lens in there in between uh, the uh, converging lens and the film, but you can just you know sell that as a unit. You, know, you pop off your regular lens and pop, put on this telephoto lens. So that's, that's what we wanna do, all right? So uh, that's gonna be uh, to the back to the drawing board and let's go let's go up here and look at a converging lens so light's going to come in here it's going to then bend down it's going to meet a diverging lens which is going to kick it up and then when it, it's here it's going to appear to come from way you know way to the left all right so these are your three uh, rays to show the idea and say this is D. This is the distance between the two lenses. And we're going to, uh, let's say, start with some numbers. Engineers, you know, want to be specific here, working with the 50 millimeter lens. And we're going to find what this F2 is. We're going to discover this. <clears throat> and what we're going to do here, we're going to be very clever. We're going to make a telephoto lens with these two component parts, but we're also gonna make a cheaper version where we can sell you just the second part because you can pop off your lens, you could pop off your lens, which is typically 50, and if you could then attach this to your lens, insert it between the camera body and this, you are constructing a telephoto lens with your converging lens as being part of the system. So if you want the best deal, you buy our combination of these two where we correct for the aberrations, but that might be like 150 bucks, all right? It may be big bucks, but I can sell you this rear lens here, and I can even make this cheaper because I'm not worried about the aberration, sell you for 30 bucks. And you buy this and then put it with your lens and you then make one of these. So that's why I like to pick this to be 50, to think ahead. So let's uh, look at this. Here are formulas, very, very nice applications of our formulas, because see, this distance is L, to go the camera body distance, because you pop off the other lens, put this on, 
use L for that. And this is the back focal length. This is the focal length in the back. Well, we already know this formula from before. The back focal length is F2 D minus F1 over D minus F1. I'm just copying from the book. And I think this may have been a homework problem. Uh, so the, the solutions, and here I'm gonna write this. I'm just gonna flip, I'm gonna flip the D on with the F1 on here and just flip down here and put the Fs first, minus D. So this is your back focal length, and I know what that is. Uh, from the camera body, uh, we will know what that is, that's spec, and let's say it's 40 millimeters. Let's say 40 millimeters, uh, you know, to get, you know, basically that space. You know, you remember you have, a, you have a mirror here, it's gonna flip up. So say, we'll use 40. So that 40 is gonna go in for L. So that is what this is. This is gonna be 40. Now the F2, we don't know what the F2 is. So let's uh, write down F2. And, but we know that the F1 is 50. And here, just to give you an example, let's just say, for example, let's take the D to be 30. And this is the fun of engineering you get to play with all these parameters and you can design different lenses. But just to give you an example, let's try 30 millimeters and see what happens, all right? So that would be 30 here, and we would divide by the 50. We don't know what the F2 is, but we know that the D is 30. And we know that the L is 40 from the, uh, the camera specifications. So now we can see what our F2 has to be uh, to make this work and it's very important that this focal length here is to the right of the diverging lens. That means if this lens has a focal length of 50, to go from here to there is 50, this D can't be more, can't, you, know, you want this D to be less, which is 30, which is good. So the D is 30. So these are the things that we have to think about as an engineer uh, to, to get something that's going to work. So now I'm gonna solve this equation uh, for the F2, and that's gonna be F2 times 50 minus 30 is 20, and then here I'm gonna have 50 minus 30 is 20, plus F2 is equal to 40. So that means F2 times 20 is going to be 20 times 40, 800, plus 40 times F2. Now there's 20 F2 over here, there's 40 over there, so if I subtract 40 from both sides of the equation, I will have a negative F2, and I want that F2, see F2 is a negative, uh, it's a diverging lens, so here's another way to check the math, make sure we're not making a mistake, and that's gonna, that's gonna be good negative. So negative 800 over 20, uh, zeros cancel, and you get minus 40 millimeters. So that's the diverging lens that you would have that would work. Well, let's find out what our effective focal length is. Now we have the formula for the effective focal length, F1, F2. This is from the homework problem over F1 plus F2 minus D. This is the effective focal length. So you wanna find out where the film thinks the one bend took place. Uh, See, so look way, you know, way back here or someplace, all right? So from here to the, to the film, that's gonna be the effective focal length. Let's see what we got for our specific numbers. So this is gonna be 50 times minus 40 over 50 F2 is minus 40, and then the D was 30. Okay, so this is gonna be a minus 2,000 up in the numerator, because four times five is 20, and there's two zeros hanging around to the right of that. Uh, 50 minus 40 uh, here is gonna be a plus 10. So 10 minus 30 is minus 20. The math comes out real easy in this case. Two into 200. Oh, this is cool. We got a 100 millimeter 
uh, that's a telephoto. And if we compare that uh, with our formula for the relative magnification, uh, this would be equal to 100 over 50. This is two. So that means if we sell you this lens by itself and you pop your lens off and put that behind your lens and then attach it to the camera, we can advertise this as to two times and they use the word here, teleconverter. So you have a choice. You can buy our system, which has a really expensive uh, combination correcting for aberration. So you can buy this system or you can buy this by itself and use your converging lens to attach it to build a telephoto lens and that's cheaper. And we would sell that as a two times converter. And we'd have to, of course, make it for your specific you know, camera because you know, the cameras, you, know, you have to be able to make the attachment, have to be able to fit it together and all that. So that's the telephoto. Now the other uh, challenge, and this is gonna take us to H3, and that is the wide angle. You wanna take a picture, say, of everyone in the, on, sitting on a sofa or something and get everybody in focus or a classroom. You wanna, you know, big classroom and get everybody in there, so you wanna have a wide angle of view. So let's look at the angle of view uh, for a second here. Uh, if you have your lens and you're looking at something far away, then your film is going to be at the focal length away because far things focus on the f uh, focal plane. And the film can be replaced by um, a sensor in a digital camera, uh, same idea. So if you take the top of the film and go out and the bottom of the film and raise two through the middle the lens doesn't bend, go straight through, this will tell you how much of the scene that you can see. Now, if you have the telephoto lens, which has the long focal length, then when you do the same trick, you have a narrow. Well, that's good if you wanna take a picture of someone's face that's far away from you, that you wanna like get the face. So that's uh, like a telescope, you want that. But suppose you wanna have here everybody in the classroom. Well, they'll be smaller on, on the film, obviously, but that's okay. You want everybody in the picture, so you want the wide angle. This one here is a ridiculously super wide angle called the fisheye, where the focal length is eight. Remember that 50 millimeters is your normal uh, lens, and telephoto goes beyond that, and wide angle goes below that, all right? And look at this, the Biltmore House. That's from the gazebo which is something like a quarter of a mile away from the Biltmore house. Uh, awesome, awesome photo. Look at that, even the things close by are peer in focus at angles so wide. Very nice. So the problem uh, here is solved very easily. If, if you've ever, have you ever looked through a pair of binoculars backwards? Because see, a pair of binoculars you know, binoculars, you can think of it as a telephoto lens. You have two of them, so you have a conversion, diversion. You, you can think of it that way. And the binoculars has to have another feature. They have to make sure it's upright. So here, they'll have some flipping mechanism with some reflections, you know, going on in there to get the, the thing to, there to be upright. But if you ever looked into binoculars backwards, everything looks tiny. It's like, that's the wide angle. So what we wanna do is we wanna take this idea where we have the diverging lens first and the converging lens like second. Then when the light comes in like here, it's gonna bend up. And then the converging lens is gonna take us down to the film. So say so here we have the film. Now, the film is faked out. It thinks that one bend took place right here. Well, that's short focal length. That's wide angle. That's what you want. See, this is F short. 
So this will do the trick. This shows you why looking through binoculars backwards makes things look tiny. It's like the reverse because see now the focal length is real short. This went up and then the converging lens brought it to the film uh, plane. And since this is the optic axis right there in the center and the film thinks, you know, this light that came in, if it were to keep going and bend once, it would have to bend once there. So it thinks there's a lens here but that lens has a very short focal length. So let's call this one, let's call this two, and let's call this D, and let's go to the engineering uh, design. This is a design. Let's, uh, for sake of discussion, let's pick F1, and that's the fun of engineering. We can pick these parameters to be what we want. And if we pick them and they don't work, that's fine. Uh, like over in the other case, I said that, you know, the distance couldn't be too much because then it wouldn't work. So here, let's see if this works. Pick this to be minus 30 and pick the D, in this case, to be 20 millimeters. And let's take the L uh, here. Let's take the L to be 50. All right, that's like the camera body. 50 is safe, definitely, uh, because you got a mirror in there, it's gonna flip up and that's, that's safe. So let's write these down. Uh, F2 is question mark, will be uh, found, discovered. And here is the 50 millimeters. And the D is the 20 millimeters. And now we use the same formula, the backward, backward focal length. The backward focal length, we just copy this down from before, F2. Because see, this is the backward focal length is your L. That's the focal length from the back. That's not the effective focal length, that's gonna be this, uh, this short one, but this is the back focal length. We have a cool formula for the back focal length uh, here, which we just copied down from before, which we already used once today, F1 plus F2 minus D, that equals L. So 50 goes in there, and for the F2, we're gonna find what that is. So the F1, in this case, is a negative 30, minus, the D is 20, minus 20, and that's gonna be over, uh, F1 is minus 30, and plus F2 we don't know, and the D is minus 20, and that's equal to 50. So if we look at this, we can see that we're gonna get F2, uh, and this is gonna be minus 50, because minus 30 minus 20 is gonna be minus 50, and minus 30, uh, minus uh, 20 again is gonna be minus 50. So this is F2 minus 50. And that's gonna equal to 50. Okay, so here at this point, we can see that this 50 will cancel this 50 and we'll have minus F2, F2 minus 50 is equal to one. So that means minus F2 is F2 minus 50. And if you bring the F2 over here, you have two of them. And if you bring the 50 on the other side, you have 50. And that means F2 is 25 millimeters. And that's uh, what is gonna be this uh, second lens. But we wanna find out what the short uh, focal length is. I wanna know what like the effective focal length is. Like, like what is this short focal length? And that's where you go to the effective focal length formula, which is our other formula, which we used, all right? And here, if we uh, use that formula, uh, F1 is going to be minus 30, and F2 we figured out to be 25. And then here we have minus 30 plus 25, and the D was 20, so minus 20. So if you look at that, you got a minus 750 divided by, looks like we have 25 minus 50, so that's a minus 25. And this focal length, effective focal length is 30, so it's 30 millimeters, so this here, the short focal length is 30 millimeters, and it's a wide angle. It worked out, it worked out. So I played around with these and having fun engineering discovery. And of course you can, 
you can plug in, uh, if in the, make a more general formula, uh, use variables, but I think it's fun in the spirit of engineering here to just try some numbers out, see what we get, and, and make some discoveries. Uh, now, you might uh, ask the question, well, if F2 is, a, is here, this F2 is a 25, if that's a 25, why couldn't you just, you already have your 20, you have, a, you have a wide angle, but remember that we can't use the 25 one lens because you got yourself that mirror in there. And you know, if this is about 50 here or something, and you put, you can't put a lens in there. You know, if you want to go 25, I mean, 30 millimeters away from the film, that mirror is there, it's gonna block you. So you really have to have the invention. In other words, what we're saying here is that the camera wide angle invention makes it possible to put it farther away from the film. So while the telephoto lens had the problem of being too big, the wide angle has the problem of being too small. So you actually want it uh, out farther away and our, our solution does that because CL is 50, which will be plenty of space to have the mirror back there. Uh, here's an example of uh, here's an example of a wide angle taken by my former neighbor uh, John Warner, Asheville professional photographer. He was taking pictures for uh, the PR folks at UNCA, and uh, there's a, a person to hire here way in the back there watching the scenario, and he used a wide angle lens here to get the students in the class. And he also uh, wanted to get you know, some of the demonstrations at the front. And he also wanted to get the slide. Uh, this is a slide. In the old days, we had a slide projector in the back of the room. We're projecting the slide. So he's got the slide here. And there is a computer projection, too, in the middle. But he wanted to get the class here with the slide. And also a reflection of the uh, con, uh, concave mirror here or something. It looks like that's a concave mirror. I can't be sure of the shape, but it looks like we have a, a reflection there from the mirror. So he wanted to have, so he wanted to have the slide, and he wanted to have the demonstrations, he wanted to have a reflect, reflection from the mirror, was nice, and he had the computer there. So very nice layout uh, of the uh, shot. And then here, to compare the wide angle with the uh, here super wide angle that we did earlier, uh, is the second photo there. Well, the last thing I'd like to cover is the concept of a zoom lens. So the last section is the zoom lens. Now the zoom lens is not gonna be able to correct for aberrations because you're gonna be able to change the focal length. It's the trade-off. If you wanna have the best possible results, you need to buy focal lengths that are fixed and spend thousands of dollars, you know, lots of money. So these professional photographers will have these like in their, in their, their backpack, you know, the, the pull of the different lenses out. These are designed to minimize aberrations for fixed length, fixed focal length, like your wide, your, your wide angle and your telephotos. But uh, if you're willing, if you're not gonna be taking pictures that need to be blown up into posters or published in magazines, then the zoom lens, uh, can be a nice alternative. Now here's a, in my paper that I wrote many, many years ago, I uh, used a formula, derived some formulas, and this is a nice uh, project, by the way, if someone's looking for a little project to do, to look at this. And I found that if you take, you know, your telephoto design, which is a converging and a diverging, and if you were to move them around, that you can get different focal lengths. So what we're saying here, this is the distance from the film. Notice you got about 45, you got 45 millimeters here, clear for the mirror. And this is uh, showing you the distance from the film, and this is the effective focal length of the combination. So down here, this is like about 110, uh, which is double my 55. Uh, I had a 55 was the camera lens that I, I had my Pentax. And then if you go to the other extreme, this is like triple. So this uh, allowed you to go from like two times to three times uh, your, in other words, you start with, say this is your one. In other words, 55 millimeters, that's like my given. 
uh, one, but when I set this up like that, this is already a two times uh, telephoto. In other words, it's 110. It's 110 millimeters. And then here's a three times, a three times, which is one like 165 millimeter. Then I found in optical engineering books, uh, I found that they had cool things like this where they had three lenses so they could, uh, let's say, not move as much. And if you move flash, you can correct for aberrations better. And that's like going to be a better uh, quality uh, lens. Now, what was frustrating to me in the engineering books, I couldn't really find a lot of values for all these things because the uh, camera companies, they keep stuff private. They're not going to tell you the index of refraction of each lens and the curvature of each lens. Heck no, man. In fact, if you work for them and learn that stuff, you usually sign a, 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 an agreement that if you have another job somewhere else, you can't share that information uh, with anybody else, all right? Because they're like secrets of the trade. So let's look, let's look at one of these cases and let's look at this case here. And, you know, to do this case, I made it 50 because that's the more common value for the, uh, the lens. And, and this is minus 60, I just picked these numbers, but I mean, when I say more common, I'm thinking of the, of the standard lens. I, I just wanted to make the numbers look uh, familiar so that this first one was like my regular camera lens. I'm thinking like teleconverter, but this is a zoom lens. You do whatever you want. If you're an engineer, you do whatever you want, and depending on what the client wants and what you're trying to make. So here, for teaching purposes, I wanted this one to be 50, a friendly number. And then this one I picked to be minus 60, you know, adapt into from the other one that I showed you and then play around. So really, you know the formulas. I mean, it's, it's not as hard to play around like this. You go ahead and you're gonna go with the back focal length, which is F2, F1 minus D over F1 plus F2 minus D equals L. And then the effective focal length, these are the two formulas we've been using all along and we're going to use them again. So we're saying here that our, our two lenses are gonna be a 50 and a minus 60, all right? And we're gonna then have the parameter D and the parameter L. Remember, L is the camera body. So we're going back to this picture here, you know, L is your camera body. And that's gonna go, well, it's actually a little more than a camera body. It's gonna go to where that second lens is. So that's your, back, that's your back focal length, that's your back focal length, and then your D between the two. So as an engineer looking at this, I'm thinking, hey, if I got F1 and F2, I, and, I, and I got, well, if I got F1, F2, and I got L, I can find what D has to be. And then over here, I could find the effective focal length, all right? So let's play around with that. So let's go ahead and look at this uh, first equation, which says F2 is minus 60, and this is then 50 minus D, and divide by F1, which is 50, and then this is the minus 60 and minus D is equal to L. Over here for the effective focal length, I'm gonna have a 50 for F1 minus 60 for F2. And this is then 50 minus 60 minus D. All right, so now let's look at this. This is gonna be minus 3000 because 60 times 50 is 3000. And it's gonna be plus 60 D. And that's going to be over 10 with a minus sign, 50 minus 60 minus D is L. So let's look at this one first. Uh, this is going to get you minus 3,000 plus 60 D is minus 10 L minus L D. All right. And then here, I am going to see, I can solve this D in terms of L. That, that, that's what I want to do. And this is, you know, 
it's up to you what you want to do here when you're discovering and, and inventing things. You, you, you just explore and try things out. So here I'm going to go with, on this case, I'm going to say that 60D plus the LB is going to be 3000 minus the 10L. So that means D, uh, 60, I think I lost the D, all right? So the 60D is there. So that means D, 60 plus L is equal to 3000 minus 10L. And I get a cool formula for D, I like this. I get 3000 minus 10L over 60 plus L. So that gives me a formula of how far apart the lenses have to be to make it be focused, all right? So that tells me what D has to be, the distance between the two lenses so that the image is on the film plane. A lot of nice physics here, nice application. And then this is gonna give me the effective focal length. And you know, here it depends on what you're interested in doing. You could put the D in, turn, in, in there and just get rid of it. I'd rather, uh, it's more fun for me not to do that and just to leave the D in there and just write this down as F is at 3000 with the minus sign over minus 10 minus D, which is 3000 over 10 plus D. And I, I, I like that, I like, the, I like this form here. Now, I, I know in some parts of my course, I emphasize uh, doing everything with symbols, like the derivation, like we did for the uh, circle of confusion. But there's a time and a place to go engineering and put in numbers and work with numbers a lot. And that's what we're doing here. We're like putting numbers in and exploring. And what I would like to do here is say, try out, uh, try out here some extreme. Say I'm talking to my mechanical engineers and they're telling me they can design a system where they turn things because see here, um, you, you, gotta, you gotta do a lot of motion and say that they tell me that we can get you even close, we can get you 60, as close as we can get, we can get you 60. And say they tell me uh, we can get you 120. So that's like another department, like the engineering department that's doing the mechanics and making this movement. They're saying, we can get you, you can go from 60, we can get you your L, we can get you your L to go from 60 to 120, all right? So I'm gonna now find out what the D is and I could ask them, hey, I'm gonna have to have your D move around uh, based on that. So let's uh, go ahead and try out the extremes. So for the L equals 60 millimeter extreme, I'm gonna need D, the distance between the two lenses to be given by, this is gonna be then 10 times 60 over 60, L is 60 plus 60. So I'm looking at here, uh, 3000 minus 600. I'm looking at 2400 and I'm looking at here 120. So I'm gonna need, 12 goes into 24, two times 20. So I'm gonna need 20 millimeters. Now that seems reasonable, that you could be 20 millimeters apart. All right. Now I'm curious what my focal length is gonna be at that point. Well, that's gonna be, with this, in this case, as 10 plus, the D is 20. So that's gonna be uh, 10 plus 20. That's 3000 over 30. And I'm very happy. That's a 100 millimeter, that's a telephoto. I got a nice telephoto here at, at, at like 100 millimeters. Now for the L equal 120 extreme, that's when uh, we get as far as, as, far as possible uh, from uh, the film, then how far apart must the lenses be? Well, and that's gonna be 3000 you know, now I'm worried when I do this, suppose I get D is negative 10 or negative 20. Well, then it's, I, you can't do that, all right? So let, let's just see if this is gonna work. This is 10 times 120 over uh, 60 uh, plus, plus the L, which is the 120. So this is 3000 minus 1200. That's an 1800. And this is 180. Uh, 
Oh, that's 10, 10 millimeters. Nice, 20 and 10, uh, that sounds reasonable. So we could then ask the uh, mechanical engineers, uh, when you do this, I, I need this D to go from the 20 and to get closer here to be 10. So can you do that? You know, because we're gonna have to have that motion. And then you can, when they design this, they may design uh, two barrels a turn, you know, one to focus and one, uh, that, that's more mechanical. Uh, I know the optics though, I need to have uh, these set here at a certain distance and these to be closer. So when we, when we do it for the uh, uh, photographer to use, you wanna make it as simple as possible. And if you just have one thing turn and have everything stay in focus and all these things change, that would be cool. All right, so then here for the effective focal length, I need 3,000 over 10 plus D, but now my D is 10. So this is 3,000 over 10 plus 10, and that is 3,000 over 20. Oh, beautiful, look at that. That's 150, 150 millimeters. So I went from a two times to a three times, because my, you know, my normal camera is a 50 millimeter. I went from two times telephoto to a three times telephoto, beautiful. So when I was in grad school, I went and bought, I bought one actually that went from, this is 100 to 150. I went and bought one that went from 100 to 300, awesome. I bought this and I took a picture of this tiger uh, at the Washington DC Zoo where I zoomed it in. I went, I went full blast. I went like 300 millimeters and there is like a far away uh, tiger because there's like a, a big you know, place for the tiger to run around and there's also water, there's a moat and then there's a fence. So I'm like really far away, but like using the zoom lens, uh, the 100 to 300 zoom lens, which I bought really love that that uh, telephoto zoom and could get that effectively close to the tiger at the full full limit okay we are engineers today designing optical engineering problems and i hope uh, that was a, a nice change of pace and also shows the power of physics in applications